This is Gary Atensu with CNTV, and today we are in Canada. I am here with the Alternative Pain Approach. Since 2022, she has been helping you take back your power with Alternative Pain Management Strategies. I am joined here with the Pain Management Coach, Stephanie Buckley. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Let's start off a little bit about yourself. Your formal education with a Bachelor's of Science in Physiology and Pharmacology and a Master's of Physical Therapy really led you to working as a physical therapist. I mean, like many out there, your work became your life. And you experienced the health results that led you to leave your 9-to-5 job and create your own business as an alternative pain management coach share with me a little bit let's go back and tell me how this all got started for you yeah well it's certainly i would have never anticipated that i am where i am today uh growing up i was very much appealed to the sciences in particular health sciences so i always knew it would somewhere be in that realm and i wanted to help people so essentially i didn't know what physiotherapy was growing up until i had my first injury and so that's what initially sparked my interest. I thought it was amazing what they could do. So that kind of planted a seed. And then fast forward, I decided I wanted to pursue that career. And I worked as a physical therapist for over six years. And wow. it was working as a physio that I really found my passion for pain neuroscience. And so that's where I did a lot of my continued education. And while working professionally on a personal side, work was my life. And I ultimately hit a point where I was not doing well and I was diagnosed with depression. And it really put into perspective what's important to me and really simply was my health. So that really began a mind shift that is led me to where I am today, had no idea this is where I'd end up, but depression really opened my eyes into, I need to find a different way of living that works best for me. And I still want to help people. Yeah. So yeah. what I found fascinating was as I was healing mentally, I started to heal physically because I myself have dealt with chronic pain and I was starting to see changes I never had before. And so I kind of explored alternative ways to help not just my mental health, but physical health as well. And it's led me to where I am today and I'm doing things physically and movement I never thought I'd be able to do again. And so I really wanna share that with other people and really, if anything, just give them hope. I mean, here we are today, like most entrepreneurs I sit down with, it becomes with a, it's really a personal journey that they take into a professional realm. I mean, the stats estimate that 50 million adults here in the United States experience chronic pain. Is simply living with some form of pain maybe more common than we'd like to think? Unfortunately, I think so. And what I find interesting is... Myself growing up and initially having my pain, I wouldn't have thought of it as chronic pain, but that's actually what it developed into. So it can kind of be sneaky. So usually some of the signs of experiencing chronic pain is perhaps you're trying all forms of treatment. So whether that's physio, chiropractic, massage, there's a whole host, right? And you're not just, you're just not seeing those improvements. In other words, you're not back to your goals or 100%. So if you feel stuck, then likely there are some changes going on at a nervous system level that need to be addressed as well as with any tissue changes. So if the initial injury was some form of strain, in other words, overstretch a muscle, there's tissue changes we got to help. But the changes we can't see are what's going on at the nervous system level. And the thing, though, that is really neat and promising with the nervous system is we can retrain it. In other words, we can retrain our nervous system to not be so hyperactive 
when it comes to letting us know we're in pain. And so that's try not to go too much in the details is a really big component that I think can sometimes be missed. I mean, there's pain that we all know we have, and then there's pain, like you say, we can't even see and maybe don't even realize. I mean, with years of clinical experience as a physical therapist, you have seen pain in others really firsthand. Can living with pain be overwhelming for most and maybe even lead to depression, as you say? Well, I think that like our physical health goes hand in hand with our mental and emotional health. And so just how we are designed, we cannot experience pain without some form of emotion. And pain impacts so impacts us so drastically, you know, and what kind of happens is you might start to be isolating from your typical world, your typical social um, environments. If you are typically physically active, now you're having to stop. And so we get all these other underlying layers that then play into our pain, but also our mental and emotional health. And if we are depressed, even if we're not diagnosed, that can potentially make our pain experience worse. And vice versa, if we're in physical pain, of course that's going to affect our mental and emotional health. So they're all interconnected. I mean, they all connect. I mean, our health is like a stack of cards, and one affects the other. It's, it's quite amazing. As an alternative pain management coach, you help women reframe their relationship really with pain. What does reframing mean? I mean, kind of explain that for us. Yeah, for sure. So essentially reframing pain is starting to look at our pain story and our pain experience. So it's unique to each individual. It's about looking into things we may not be aware of. So firstly, what are our reactions to pain? What are our thoughts, our emotions? And how does that then play with our pain experience? Do we have fears now of pain and fear of movement, fear of doing things? Do we potentially have some limiting beliefs when it comes to pain? I know for myself, I eventually got to the point where like just walking five minutes, I was scared of getting in pain and I would experience pain. And these are all happening on a you know subconscious level. So reframing pain is starting to look at how we relate to pain. It can also be a big identifier, right? If you're living with pain for so long, kind of my biggest aha moment for myself was I realized it was me that was getting in my own way because of all these fears of making the pain worse, making the injury worse. And I realized that that was my big kind of sticky point. And so that's where I kind of turned the reframe pain I started to look at my pain experience differently. So as an example, let's say my friends want to go for a walk. Typically be like, nope, I don't want to get in pain, don't want to risk it. Instead, I asked myself, if I wasn't in pain, would I go do that? And yes, I would. So then I would use strategies and it might look a little different than maybe what I uh, did prior to having pain but I was then able to go and participate. So it's just reframing how we view pain and then reframing how we can address it so we can ultimately get back into our lives again. I mean, great example. I mean, your approach is not a simple, really one-sided strategy, but rather using science, mindfulness, movement, and even some good old-fashioned self-care. Why this holistic, well-rounded approach? Why have you chosen that? Um, a few reasons. So I guess a first, uh, firstly, was when I was working as a physio, I really saw a gap in helping people with pain. Now, I will firstly say I'm very grateful for all the health services I have access to. I'm very fortunate. However, we don't have the time to help these people that have chronic pain. And ultimately, we need more time with them. So in a clinic setting, you have very short amount of time to start to, you know, try to go into the depths, the root 
causes. We just don't have the time. So that's kind of a big gap I saw. And if we want to create long lasting change when it comes to pain, we need to address it not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, because it's all interconnected. And so that's where I really kind of thought this new holistic approach. I mean, so you're basically saying for long lasting um, change in pain management, I mean, this has to become a deep dive. We're talking physically, mentally, emotionally, you even said spiritually. Um, is this where your coaching comes in and you're able to take that time that you wish you probably had back when you were in the clinical environment? Yeah, that's exactly it. So setting it up. So A, I want to hear a person's pain story, right? Take the time, get to know their story, because ultimately in their story, they will tell you what you need. And as a coach, it's our role to guide and support. And then I can use my knowledge in terms of the science piece, but also I can empathize. I've been there too. And so absolutely, my approach will go into multiple layers, not just the physical. So a person does have to be at a certain level of ready for some change, as scary as it may be, but willing to look a little deeper. As a pain management coach, you yourself have been there and done that. I mean, by addressing your mental health, it led you to face your physical pain. Is this a healing um, kind of both inside and out for people that you help? Most certainly. So healing pain is a very personal journey and it's a lot of inner work and outer work and you need the balance between the two. If you don't have that balance, it's gonna be a whole lot harder to reach your goals and reach those dreams that you have maybe before you had pain. Interesting. I mean, let's face it, pain can be debilitating. I mean, simple tasks like personal hygiene to maybe just getting out of bed can be a challenge. Does your personal experience really help in relating and therefore helping others? Absolutely. So I, I actually say the gift that depression gave me was being able to relate. So prior practicing as a physio, and they teach us the biopsychosocial model, right? So in other words, mental health plays a role. But if I had somebody, we have our health screening questionnaires, do you have depression? Do you have anxiety? You can see that you can see if they're on medications. But I honestly really had no idea what they were going through. And so I was allowed to look at the bigger picture. So as an example, I remember having a client where they were going through medication changes. That is not easy if you're going through medication changes with terms to mental health. So I don't care if you did your exercises. I want you to take care of yourself through this transition. So how can I help you manage where you are now? And don't worry, we'll get to those other goals. But what's most important right now is you and supporting you here. So it definitely gave me a deeper understanding. Of course, every one situation is unique to their own, but it did give me a little more insight. Speaking of speaking of unique situations, I mean, be it a two hour coaching session or a private one on one over six months, is it necessary to get to know your clients to really create that customized um, strategy or approach for them? Yeah, I believe there needs to be, I guess, where I say unique for each person in terms of just nervous system changes, it takes a lot of time. And also if we look at trying to encourage people to form new habits, that takes time as well. And unfortunately, pain isn't a straight up journey of improvement. There's gonna be bumps and roads along the way. So hate to say it, but unfortunately, your pain might flare. It's probably done it before, but then can we support you through that so you know how to manage it better and potentially maybe the flare isn't as bad or you recover a whole lot quicker. So I find the longer time frames gives a more opportunity to 
address any of the unexpected life events that may occur. So, and that relationship is so important with a client is building that trust. And once again, that could happen right off the hop or it might take some time. So that's where I really do think that time is a, a key factor in helping others with chronic pain. So we're talking about you can get to your goal, but it's not always a straight line of what you maybe uh, would have imagined. You never know where it's going to take you. I mean, you have always been fascinated with the body. Do you also have an interest really in just people? And do you enjoy getting to know your clients and kind of really celebrate their wins with them? Yeah, I'm definitely always, from a young age, I've always wanted to help people. I would describe myself more as an empath. In other words, I can really feel other people's emotions. And I care about people. And really, at the end of the day, I want to help them succeed, celebrate what may seem like little wins when they're actually huge wins. And I really think at the end of the day, all this work really comes back to reconnecting with yourself and showing yourself love, self-love. That's really, I believe, even deeper than movement and pain is we are relearning how to take care of our bodies, how to love our body and how to love ourselves through the pain and the challenging times, which I know is not easy. Wise words are always know thyself. Let me ask you this. I and mean, you share your knowledge through coaching, but also through speaking to groups. What topics can be taught in your workshops? There's lots of different kinds. So, but generally speaking is the pain neuroscience. So when I say that, that's the physiology. So what are the changes going on in the body, in particular, the nervous system, which is your brain, spinal cord, and then the rest of the nerves that go all over the body. What are those changes? So that's a key piece to understand. Research has actually shown that just by educating patients, so they're learning more about pain, their pain decreases. So it kind of supports that knowledge is power. I know it's a bit of an extrapolation, but that can really help people and not be so afraid if they understand what's going on and know that we can create a plan for it. For those viewers out there, maybe that are in pain, uh, maybe they've tried traditional approach of painkillers, simply coping. Explain why your alternative approach is worth maybe just a simple virtual chat with you. And is that initial phone call, is that a, is that a free consultation part of that? Is that a discovery call? Absolutely. So I have a, I offer a free discovery call. The purpose is so you can meet me, I can meet you. You can let me know what you're looking for and I can explain my approach and how it works. And then we can see if we're a good fit. You know, I'm not going to be a fit for everybody and that's okay. And that's really what that first call is, is to see if we connect, if I think I can support them and if they feel they could benefit from my services as well. Stephanie, this shift has really changed your life in ways you probably could never have thought or imagined. And you now help other women take back their power. Is this rewarding work for you? Absolutely. Um, I say even if just a little piece of, it, of my information or listening to me, if it sparks something in somebody else to go wherever it is they need to go on their healing journey, doesn't have to be to me, but if it sparks something, um, to help them move forward, I feel like I've done my job. You've done your job, and at the end of the day, helping people connect with themselves, which is definitely power within itself. Viewers, let's take a look at the bottom of the screen. What you're going to see is their website, and on the website, basically, you're going to learn more about her story. I mean, you can see all the ways she provides her services out there to the public, be it one-on-one -on -one coaching in her blog, or obviously setting up a workshop where she can speak to many. Um, it's been said, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. So reach out today. Once again, that is Alternative Pain Approach with Stephanie. Take back your power. This is Gary Atensu with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.